The Dirty Three has been playing together for 20 years now, and I could probably count the number of times we rehearsed my hands and feet. We started in Melbourne in Australia in the early 90s and um, there's always been a, a great kind of environment for, for live music there. Our thing was kind of hard to pigeonhole and, and we got adopted by the, the rock and roll bands and we would open for people like the Beastie Boys when they were going through town and because we were kind of this odd, odd concept, people responded to the approach that we had which was I guess more punk rock than anything else. The kind of essence of it was very kind of raw and aggressive and, and um, confronting. It was a very kind of exciting time. It would get greeted with a lot of, um, a lot of hatred. And uh, it, was, it felt like we, you re we were really doing something right. And um, then when we went to America, we even opened for Beck when he had this massive hit with Odelay and uh, he invited us to play you know, basketball stadiums with, to the MTV audience. And that was just insane. It was just so kind of invigorating and, you know. The only thing that we were really kind of determined to do was leave Australia. There was a point where we just knew that if we didn't leave and go and find that similar audience elsewhere, that we would implode. And we kind of left in 95 and never went back. We started recording it probably 18 months ago, but we'd been trying to record it over the last five or six years. We never seemed to come up with anything that had moved forward in any way and the ideas just felt very familiar and it eventually came together of doing a series of live dates and realising that was the way back into recording. The energy that we had live and the kind of approach that we had to the older material was how to start new stuff. Try and keep a really loose structure and, and not try and rein it in like we'd been doing. So it, it kind of feels old but not really. In terms of the longevity of the group, certainly the fact that we've all been doing different outlets has added to the longevity of the group because I think if we'd only done that, we probably would have imploded. We, had, we were heading that way in the late 90s to imploding because it, we, we just did this six years of just constant, constant touring you know, all the time and it sort of got too much and it was great to be able to um, go into different things and play and, and get away from it and then come back to it and realise what was great about the band. Creatively, I think it's really important. I have no idea how it works these days. It certainly seems like we're part of an old generation. I mean, it kind of feels a bit like the Wild West, you know, when we started out compared to now. I just don't understand the terrain. I never really did, but, but now I have no idea. I'm not really sure anybody does, to be honest. I think they're all trying to second guess, like everybody at the moment, how to do things. It does feel like it's, it is coming back to people wanting to see music for the kind of the right reasons. I like to think there's a positive thing about all the changes. From as far back as I can remember, music always had a very big part in my life, personal, personal life. It was a real escape, it was a way of getting away from the regular things that were going on and, and uh, allowed me to kind of engage in a, some sort of fantastic world. So many records have felt like they've had a real important part in my kind of very being in a way, you know, that, that music was always something that was uh, heavy currency. I never took it lightly, you know.